Welcome to our podcast, Inspiring Living, with me, Mark Candelaria. I am an architect, blogger, traveler, chef, father, and husband. I am the founder and now a partner of a fabulous 25-person architecture firm specializing in high-end residential architecture, designing amazing homes across the country. We have hosted tours to Italy, Spain, and now Napa over the last 20 years. And in the course of all this, I have met a lot of interesting people who truly inspire me. Our podcast is about all the opportunities that are right there in front of us to inspiring living. Yes, we will talk about architecture and design, but every week we will venture into all sorts of topics that will inspire you, teach you, and motivate you to inspire living every day. My guests will include a wide gamut of amazing people from those in the design industry to clients to real estate professionals, chefs, artists, sports figures, and philanthropists, and people who just flat out get it. Sit back and enjoy, and let's have some fun exploring all the opportunities that are there just waiting for us. Please subscribe and get ready to be inspired every week. Okay, as my dad says, here we go. Because Inspiring Living is all about the people and the organizations that inspire us, we are excited to have Monogram Appliances as one of our sponsors. Anytime we do a new kitchen or a kitchen remodel, Monogram Appliances are what we recommend to our client. Their appliances are the definition of luxury meticulously detailed using the finest materials and an ownership experience that is second to none. This is how Monogram is always thinking ahead and inspiring and elevating the kitchen experience. Because at Monogram, they don't just elevate one thing, they elevate everything. Welcome everyone and thanks again for listening to our podcast, Inspiring Living. Well, we are now in week three from McMinnville, Oregon and my vacation has officially ended But I'm just going to stay another two weeks and enjoy this beautiful weather. And this is where and how I will work from home. So we are back to three of us here at the Airbnb as my wife Isabel flew in over the weekend. And I cannot tell you how nice it is to have you here, my love. Welcome to Oregon. Thank you. How do you like it? I love it. It's been wonderful. Pretty nice, right? Yeah. 75 degrees right now. Oh my gosh. 730 so nice at night. To pull up and all the greenery and trees and all the flowers. It's so beautiful. Pretty nice. How was your flight over here? It was really no big deal. Um, I was a little... Well, not a little concerned, but a lot concerned that there were people in the airport not wearing masks. In Phoenix, right? In Phoenix. What about in Portland when you arrived? Everyone in Portland was wearing yeah, masks. Yeah, it's Phoenix. Hence, yeah. hence our numbers, I guess. Yeah. Right? So, you know, I mean, it's an easy thing to do. I, I just don't understand why people, you know, won't take that precaution. Yeah, it's not that tough. So but get the mask on, guys. Come on. It's not a big deal. Let's do it. Yeah, and the and the um, the airlines were very organized. They kept us as far apart as they could. I mean, obviously we're sitting, you know, next to each other, but they they did make everyone exit one row at a time, and the row behind was not allowed to get up until, you know, that row in front had already exited. So right, but no one is taking any temperatures. I heard. No. Nope. No thermometers. No to thermometers be seen. at TSA or mm-hmm. when you boarded the airline. No. Nope. Huh, interesting. So I also still have my daughter Tiffany here, and we are having a great time, right, Tiff? Yeah, it's been amazing. It's been a great trip. You went on a nice hike this afternoon, didn't you? Yeah, it was. it's literally like down the street by Safeway. There's just this whole nature preserve, and we've driven by it. And so today I just went, and yeah, it's gorgeous. Good. Well, we got right into it by exploring a couple of amazing vineyards and tasting venues yesterday. How fun was that? Oh my gosh, so fun. They are gorgeous. It's like being in Tuscany, isn't it, Isabel? It really was. I mean, the closest thing I think we're going to get this year. Yeah, and for for a two-hour flight, it's not too bad, is it? No, I'll take it. I'll take anything at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, we're now in week 18 and working from home at Candelaria Design, and we were slated to come back to work this week. But with the rise in cases, we're now pushing it to Labor Day. And my guess, with the political upheaval, I think we are about to see... We may not be back until 2021, but who knows? I mean, who, no one has a crystal ball. No one knows where this is going to go. And we're just going to do the best we can every single day and live in the now. Right, guys? That's all we can do. That's all we can do. We're thinking we may do a quick cooking class this coming weekend as I really want to share Tiffany's creamy Tuscan salmon. So stay tuned. We might push it off to next weekend. We might be busy at winery. Yeah, we Dad. might be busy. So maybe <laughs> we'll do it the following weekend. We'll see. Um but her, her recipe, it's fast. It's so good. I love it. And uh, you can catch all of our recipes and videos on our website. So go check them out. 
I want to offer my gratitude to all of you who have been listening to our podcast as all our listeners keep growing nicely. Thanks to all who turned tuned into our podcast last week featuring Anna and Scott Sadler of Surface Refinements. We featured the story of their work and craft two weeks ago, and last week we featured the story behind their lives, which is amazing, including time with Ringo Starr and Prince Albert. Please give a listen if you haven't already. We love them both. Our mantra is inspiring living, and we do our best to do that in everything we do, from our podcast to our cooking classes to our tours, and of course, with our Candelaria Design Homes. This week's podcast, episode 48, is the start of a three-part podcast. This time, I'm featuring my three partners who are in the process of taking ownership of Candelaria Design for me, so maybe someday I can retire. What do you think, Is? I think it's happening. <laughs> Let's do it. Tiff, what do you think? I think it's not happening, <laughs> and you need to try harder. <laughs> we'll try harder. I think we have a ways to go before that happens, but baby steps turn into miles, and the journey has begun, and I'm excited to pass the baton on to three amazing ladies who will all bring something unique to Candelaria Design and our mantra, Inspiring Living. We're going to start with our partner who has been with us the shortest amount of time and work our way up to the partner who has been with us the longest. We will, be ce- we will be celebrating her 20th year anniversary with Candelaria Design in a couple weeks. This week, though, we will bring you Meredith Thompson. She is amazing. She is a licensed architect, grew up right here in Arcadia, and all I can say is what an absolute joy it is to work with, collaborate with, and create with this amazing and uber-talented lady. We have a number of over-the-top projects we've completed, have under construction or are on the boards together, and it's just such a joy to work with her. I love collaborating with her. There's always so much energy, and I just love always the outcome of what we, what we put together. One of her projects, a spec home in Paradise Valley, just sold for over $5 million, and the buyers bought the lot next door, and we're going to add on. So how's that, for, how's that for fun? Pretty cool, huh? That's awesome. And you love working with Meredith, right, Isabel? I do love working with Meredith. I mean, I love all of our combined projects that we do together, but, you know, um, Meredith just has such a way about her. It's always such a joy to have her run a meeting, and she just keeps everybody going. She's so positive. Very she's so positive. She's so creative, and, I mean, she really is just a remarkable, remarkable architect. Yeah, and I don't think we've seen – all of what Meredith can bring to the table. I think it's still a blossoming entity. I mean, she's just such a such a cool person. And ju- I, just the time I've been with her, I've watched her grow exponentially. And so I think uh, the future is just, just endless for her. Her talent is just so innate and so much of who she is that I think it's just going to keep unfolding with her as she continues her career and throughout her life, really. Yep. Yep, for sure. Okay, so give this a listen. Her warm personality comes through loud and clear, and she definitely leads a life of inspiring living for sure. So have a great week, everyone. Stay safe, and let's live life and love and compassion and positivity. Okay, here we go. All right, hello, everybody. I have got a super, super duper special guest with me today. I am so excited. I'm starting a little three part series where I'm going to introduce all of you to my three fantastic partners at Candelaria Design. And I'm going to start with the one who has been with me the, the least, mm-hmm. and we're going to work up to the one who's been with me the most, mm-hmm. okay? So I've got. Uh, Wonderful, beautiful Meredith Thompson in my office this morning. It's a little warm in here. I, I think they've got the heat on in July. We, we both think they're trying to kill the coronavirus, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're sitting a- apart. Mm-hmm. You can't see it. We'll have to take a picture here mm-hmm. at the end. I forgot. We're supposed to start with a picture, but we'll, we'll finish with a picture. Uh, so it's what? What is the date? I, I'm losing track of time. The 25th of it's June. 25th, yeah. 25th of June, yeah. And so we are, I'm leaving tomorrow for Oregon. Mm-hmm. You are leaving next Tuesday for Indianapolis and near Indiana somewhere. Yeah, exactly. You Mm -hmm. have a family compound out there, right? We do, up north in northern Indiana. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, Meredith, you've been with me how long? I think seven years. I think it's been about seven years, too. It goes by extremely fast, doesn't it? Yeah, it was 2013 when I started here. Okay, 2013. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we were just kind of coming out of the recession or the, what did they call it, the Great Great Recession. Mm -hmm. And uh, we weren't hiring anybody. We were just happy to kind of start to feel like we were on the other side of it. 
and uh, so we weren't hiring. We were just we were cranking away. We were we were getting we were starting to get busier, which which I was really happy about. And then I think you reached out to me. Yeah, I did. So I was moving back here and looking for a new job, and my mom said, "You know, you gotta you gotta get in contact with this Mark Candelaria guy. I see his signs everywhere." <laughs> so <laughs> they probably had one in their front yard. I, used to, I used to drive down <laughs> trucks and did. just plop them around. <laughs> they did, and. And so I went on your your website and immediately felt the connection because I saw that you hand drafted and that's what I did and I was y- you know big into sketching, and so I think I reached out via email and just sent you some of art my sketches. Yeah, you did. I think it was combination. I, yeah. I, now that you say the that, I think you emailed me some uh-huh. sketches, but I, I think I don't think I saw it, and yeah. I think you called me. <laughs> yeah, I and was that's pretty. What, that's what got my attention. Yeah. So then you called me and I I looked at your email. I'm like, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Great voice, great personality. Seems like on the phone, beautiful sketches. Okay, yeah, you need to come in. Let's let's talk. Yeah. So we met, and this is still when we were back on at Twelfth Street, I believe. It, yes. Right. Correct. Mm-hmm. And because we moved in 2014, mm-hmm. and um, so you came in, and I was just blown away by your drawings, your your demeanor, your personality, and. First thought I had was, oh, my God, I've got to hire her because if my competition gets this lady, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> so I was like, I was like really, really excited because I had and not so I. I had not seen anyone with your talent mm-hmm. come walking in the door in, in a long, long time. Oh, smart. So I was very, very excited. And I, w- I always wondered what you thought about me. Oh, gosh. Well, I was really excited because obviously I was I was looking around. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, when I met you and met the office, I was I knew it was the first. So fit. was that your first stop, or he'd, had you made some prior stops? Um, maybe, I, maybe some prior <laughs> stops, <laughs> yeah, but um, not many. Yeah. And, and, but I just knew, just, you know, meeting you and connecting with you so quickly, and then everybody else, I, I think I met Evelyn and Jeff first yeah. off. No, they're, well, they're, you were in good, sh- good, yeah. good hands right yeah. out of the gate. So I just, it felt, it felt like home, and yeah. felt like, you know, the place where I would really be able to grow, so, yeah. Yeah, so I remember telling them I'm going to hire someone. They both looked at me like I was, like, insane. <gasps> well, I also remember this was funny, too, because I was really – I think I was aggressive with the, intervi- the interviewing because we met. You said, great, you know, let's be in touch. And I said, great, tomorrow? <laughs> like, you know, like <laughs> – you. Well, I like that. <laughs> yeah. And I remember Stacy looking at me thinking, like, who is this girl? Yeah, who is this yeah. ballsy gal? <laughs> Jeez, it comes in here and just takes over. <laughs> tomorrow? Yeah, what kind of coffee you guys got? You got to change that. It needs to be this now. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I went back to him and said, well, look, I really want to hire this gal. I think she's amazing. I think she's got the talent that we, we, we need and want. And, and they're like, no, 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 no. S- <laughs> slow down here, cowboy. And uh, I said, all right, let's compromise. Let's, let's hire her as a consultant. We'll give her some projects. Let's yeah. see how it goes. See how everybody likes her. Yeah. So he started with that. I can't remember what project it was. Do you? Do you remember? Yeah. Well, so I think I started on, um, gosh. There was the cat Cirillo yeah. remodel, yeah. and then the Leffler. Oh, okay. Yeah, Leffler was pretty early. I mean, yeah, it, it, it was, was pretty right early. I was, con- I was doing. I remember starting it, and I was at home working on okay, it. Okay, well, that must have been it then. Um, I, but then I also helped assist uh, Vivian on some silver leaf projects early on, and um, and Braden on some stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But so those were the two projects. That so how I long did we do that consultant gig? It wasn't very long. Three months. Okay, I was going to guess two months. Mm-hmm. So it yeah. wasn't long. And no. Everyone's like, get her, get her, get her. <laughs> yeah. So we did, and we brought you on board. Mm-hmm. And you pretty much just started as a project manager. You, you were an architect. I was, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you kind of just moved up through the ranks. Mm-hmm. And before we knew it, you were a co-team director. Is that how it went? Or? Yeah, it was. And... Um, Gosh, who did I co-team with? Was I it? I can't remember. Or did you just become a? Did we just make you a team director and then you just co-team director with somebody else? This is awful. I co-teamed with Lisa when she did it, but I thought, oh, and then I co-teamed with Damon when he did it as yeah, well. Yeah, that's probably how it was. Yeah, I think you were on Damon's team. Yeah. to begin with. Exactly. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> it's been a blur, hasn't Gosh. it? Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. like, what happened over the last seven years? Yeah. yeah. Well, try twenty years. It's <laughs> really a blur. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So you worked your ranks up that way. And then, I can't remember when it was, maybe two, three years ago, you uh, worked into a partner's role. Mm -hmm. And did I come out of of left field with that to you? Or did you kind of have a feeling that might be coming? No, I was I was surprised at how quickly it came. To be yeah. honest with you, and well, so it some was other people probably were too, but <laughs> that's a whole other well, subject. It was it was so it's 
you know, obviously a great honor. And so it was to be able to be given that gift so early on, Mark, is really, yeah, special. Yeah, so no, thank you. You deserved it. You're, a, you're, an, you're an amazing mm -hmm. talent and someone I love to collaborate with. And yeah. clients love you. And so you're, you're <laughs> sitting in the right chair with the right, right title on your <laughs> business cards, Thanks, for sure. So let's go back a little bit. I mean, okay. you're working on some great projects now, which yes. we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. Uh, but let's go back to where did where did uh, Meredith grow up and where are you from? So I grew up here in Phoenix, um, Arizona, actually, not far from here. I grew up in the Arcadia area. My parents still live um, in that house. Same house. Same house. Wow, that's mm -hmm. just a little cool. facelift, but yeah. same ranch ranch home footprint. Just yeah. looks a little different on the outside. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, so yeah you grew up there in Arcadia. Yeah. You're tooling around Arcadia. Yep. And a little uh, bit different then. Yeah. So how did you? Di when did you get the <laughs> architecture bug? So it wasn't necessarily that I grew up loving, you know, obsessed with architecture, but I really loved art and math. And I also, but I also, it was probably more ingrained in me than I knew because I remember doing, I would do little sections of homes when I was little. Like I liked seeing the little rooms and things like that. <laughs> but it was in high school that I started thinking about it. I was really obsessed with math, really obsessed with art. Did How they could have I have drafting at, at Xavier? They didn't. They didn't. No. Huh. So, but I just started looking at different programs of how I could apply that, and it seemed just architecture just kind of hit all the buttons of yeah. what I was looking for. So you're in Xavier. You went to Xavier. I went to Xavier. Mm -hmm. You're a, you're a Gator, like yeah. my couple, yep. two of my daughters. Yep. And um, so so you started thinking about architecture at that point yes. already. Yeah. Okay. So then mm -hmm. you begin your search as to where to go to college. Yeah. And and what were what were your how did that all come to pass? So I was um, as I was looking around at different programs and what they could offer, I I was looking at University of Michigan, University of Notre Dame, um, UVA, some of those schools yep. that I knew had good programs, but it was really the University of Notre Dame's. Their curriculum that spoke to me because yeah. it was traditional based and you had to do everything by hand drafting and hmm. watercoloring. And I mean, you had to go to Rome your third year, which, yeah, yeah that's wasn't, a big, yeah, that's not, a big draw. not yet. So, <laughs> so, and then I mean, compared to the University of Michigan's program, which is a real modern approach, mm -hmm. it just, there's something about Notre Dame that really spoke to me. So uh -huh. that's what drew me there. So, U of A and ASU wasn't in the, in I the wanted, cards. I wanted to get out. You wanted to get out. Why'd you, why did you want to get out? <laughs> I don't know. I just had kind of a bug to go travel. I mean, my parents are from Indiana, so there was something that drew me to the mi to the Midwest. Yeah. But I think I just wanted to go out and experience something new. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. That's really cool. So uh, from from here, you went out there. Yeah. You went out to Indiana. Yeah. And you were there for how long? So it's a five year program five -year to get program. your yeah your bachelor's there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your father's an attorney, right? Yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, what did he think about his daughter being an architect? Um, I think he loved it. Yeah. I think he loved the I idea. Think, uh, attorneys yeah. are pretty much uh, hidden architects. They they all love architects. I've never met an attorney yet that didn't want to be an architect. Yeah. Well, he also said, just as long as you're not an attorney, that's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've met too many architects though that have been wanting to be an attorney. Yeah. But right. We do yeah. a lot of legal work, yeah, don't we? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So he's been helpful to he's been be able to, to, to yes to yeah. talk to about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. So Notre Dame, you went to Rome, you yes. went to Italy. Yes. For how long? A Just year. A year. Mm -hmm. Wow. So where did where did you stay there? Um, it right by um, so Campo di Fiori was oh. where our where our hotel was, uh -huh. and it's great because it's this little hotel that's built into what used to be the side of an old theater. Yeah. And then we just, and so all the rooms, it's like all these different right levels of oh, wow. rooms. That's it, one of my favorite parts of Rome. Oh, it's it's amazing. I love that market. Oh. And just the energy around there, Piazza Navone, uh, yeah, you know, just right across there. the street, basically. Our studio is, is right by the Pantheon. So okay. I walk by that every single day. That's so cool. I mean, it's just. Yeah, that whole little heart is just my favorite part. Best best year yeah. of my life by That's far. That's so cool. Yeah. So then you were there for a year, and then mm -hmm. did, you grad did you have to come back for a year? I did. And two then, years. Oh, for two years. Yeah. So they kind of they put kind of wedged it in the middle. Yep. Okay. So then you graduated, and then what? Then what did you decide? Once you graduated, like the world's wide open. Yeah. Where, where, what are you gonna do? Well, I had I had interned in between my senior, my junior and senior year, or my senior and fifth year, at um, a company in in Chicago. Wow. So I thought I was gonna go work in Chicago afterwards because yep. a lot of people from Notre Dame go there. Yeah. But it was um, during my career the career fair in my fifth year that a company came out from New York and I, it was not, I did not have any, I didn't have any interest in going to New York. I'd never been there other than a layover, hmm. but this company came out and the people that came out with it were great. And Rob, who's this British guy that worked there is still one of my closest friends. He was a mentor that came out and interviewed. Um, 
and but they all hand drafted and mm-hmm. it was this really cool they did historic renovation in the village and there was just something about it i got a job offer and i decided wow. to take it so that must have been a big change going from indiana to <laughs> new york city huge change yeah so where in new york city did you live well i lived um i lived down at uh kind of in the village actually uh. we found this really small two of my good girlfriends from college came out there with me or oh, they were cool. they were going out there on their own anyhow but yep. we found an apartment that was so, i mean it's the cliche new york apartment <laughs> it was so small wow i think it was one studio one studio apartment that that was divided into three rooms it was so small but for a while there they didn't they didn't move out when i did and so i was living with a friend who lived in upstate New York and I would commute like an hour and a half via train every morning and then wow. back. Yeah. Holy cow. So did that for a couple months and then and then moved into the city. Wow. So mm-hmm. how long were you in New York? Three years. Three years. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. It was enough. Yeah. I loved it there, but I it wasn't long term for me. Yeah. So what are your fo- some of your favorite things about New York? Because I, I, you know, mm-hmm. you know, I love New York. Love it. And I feel mm-hmm. really bad with what's going on right now. But I know. It's like. I, I've got my inkling to go, but yeah. like it's not that strong. <laughs> yeah, can, it can wait. <laughs> it yeah, can wait. yeah. So, what are your fr- some of your favorite spots? So, I think just the whole f- the fact that the city is your living room. Yeah, I, I and it's all walking distance, literally. All. So yeah. I just it didn't matter that our apartment was so small because we we're out on you know exploring around the parks all the time. There was so much to do. I was I really loved music and I still do, but I, I went to concerts like twice hmm. twice a n- you know a week with wow. a fr- with friends just because it was so easy to go do that just walk over so yeah. um i do miss that just having it so so was chelsea's available. market there at that time yet or it was it was already yeah mm-hmm. yeah and then they, now they've got that whole hudson yards thing yeah, which, which I, I haven't been there yet it's neat yeah but it looks looks like it's gonna be really cool it's so neat yeah. and i've and that's what I do miss was that when you and I went back not yeah. too long ago, I forgot how energized the city makes you feel just yeah. walking around. Yeah, I always I remember my first trip to New York, and as I crossed the Queensboro Bridge mm-hmm. or whatever coming mm-hmm. from Kennedy, you could just feel electricity. I mean, yeah. you could literally feel it. Yeah, you know the energy in the city. Yeah, and it's it's a real deal. It I mean, is. It's not made up. Th- so my friend lived in the. Th- I think it was like the theater district or, or, or like the, gar- I forget what it was, but it was kind of like mid midtown yep. area. And w- when I first moved there, she let me stay a couple nights or something. And I just remember I landed and I got there and she lived on like the 42nd floor, <laughs> you know, and I looked out across the city. I was like, what did I do? Oh, that Where am I? That yeah. Would, that would be but freaky. that quickly changed. Yeah. And how old were you then roughly? Like T- uh, 23. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the, the world's your oyster yeah. at that point. Yep. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So you did it for three years, you three said? Three years. And then, then you moved to San Francisco. I did. So how did that happen? <laughs> well, this one's this one's funny because I was looking for... Ch- I knew I didn't want to stay in New York. Yeah. Um, you did the New York gig. You were ready for something gig, different. Yeah, wanted to, um, and it just so happened that um, I had a good friend that was living in New Zealand at the time. And I had gone out there for a really long vacation. And I decided I'm going to give up architecture and go work on a winery. Wow. So I had this whole thing planned. My parents were really supportive on the phone. You know, even, you know, I could hear it in their voice. Well, anything you want to do, you know, but they're thinking, are you really going to give up architecture at this point? I had it planned out in my head and out of nowhere. And I I swear it was like an angel. I'm not kidding. I got a call from um, Peter Penoyer Architects. Hmm. And they just said, hey, listen. We we've heard some things about you. We're just you know talking. Would you have any interest in in working with us? And I said, Well, I'm one foot out the door. And they said, Well, that's interesting because we're actually opening up a sister office in San Francisco. Would you have any interest in going out there and helping start it up? And I was me like that's that's, that's it. what I did. There's my wine. It was smart. Yeah, <laughs> so by, by wine. I didn't know anything about wine. Yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. You know, it just it seemed. Your mom and dad were supportive though because they probably figured there's gonna be a case in the mail every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, they're just saying. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think they were super relieved when I said I was moving to San Francisco, but they were like, "Okay, well, maybe she's going to work on a winery yeah. in New Zealand for a little bit." Oh, that's wild. Yeah, so, so it was the right it was the right decision. Yep. So did, was there a lag time between New York and San Francisco, or did you no, just pack I just, up? I you just, just packed up and yeah, moved. I just I took a weekend. My mom met me out there, and we just walked the city the whole time, and we just looked for um, for rent signs in people's windows. Yeah. And I just happened to get an like, so I got an apartment. I just moved out there. Wow. Yeah. So you worked for that firm for a period of time. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. But then you moved more into an interior design firm. I did. I did. So um, my experience doing the sister office was great. It was wonderful. Um, and but they were just starting that office up. So they were just you were kind of the ground, ground yeah, floor. Well, and that's it, good. Yeah. That's and good there, was just, there was just two of us. And it was really, it was wonderful. But uh, I met Suzanne Tucker. 
and I was helping her do some renderings for her own company, mm-hmm. for her interior design firm. And we just f- formed a fast relationship. And she said she was looking to open up um, a, like an interior architecture department in mm-hmm. her office. And I just thought, what a great, like this could be like a master's program to learn more about sure. that side of yeah. things. And so um, so we, we just, I transitioned into that role. Interesting. Yeah. So at one point you got your architect's license. Was that in California or was it here? It was in California. In so California. it was, sorry, I keep on. Um, but it was when I was working for Suzanne Tucker. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you just had reached enough experience along. So you wanted to get that done like right away. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So by that point I had enough um, enough hours yeah. to start taking the test. Yep. And it just worked out great that I could do it during my time with Suzanne. Yeah, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. So how long were you with Suzanne? For... Five years, yeah, I think. Quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do some cool projects over there? Oh, s- really cool projects. <laughs> it was Tell really me about fun. Some of those. Yeah. So we got you to. You have do to say any names. Just yeah. Just within the city, it's fun yeah. because there's some magnificent homes built into a city. Right. So a lot of that stuff, we, it was about the renovation because you aren't doing a lot of you know changing walls, exterior walls, and right. things like that. So we got into a lot of detail, which yeah. was really fun. Yeah. Um, but then because there's. Uh, Tahoe that's close and yeah. you know and All the peninsula that. you know the, the Napa Norwood, yeah y- there was some really <laughs> big homes that were getting or it doesn't matter if it's big just interesting homes right. that we are going to so I got to do some in Lake Tahoe and and get to fly out there so yeah. that was great that's mm-hmm. pretty cool mm-hmm. so at some point then you got a little uh, homesick I guess I did I did so tell us about that I think I came home for a break and I was just my my brother had been living in San Francisco with his wife mm-hmm. and he had moved back to Phoenix mm. So my whole family was here, and they were getting together for barbecues. How old were you then, stuff. roughly? Um, I was about uh, 30. Yeah. Thir- yeah. So things th- start yeah. changing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And as much as I love San Francisco, it's an amazing place. Oh, yeah. It, you, you, it's hard to get certain things there. Yeah. yeah. You know? I was going to be in the same apartment, and yeah. I was kind of thinking. It's like New York. Yeah. I mean, it's just you're very limited. You are. And resources are hard to come by. It it's is. A, everything's a struggle. A cup of coffee is a walk. It's, it's a struggle. It's yeah. parking. Everything's hard. Yeah, we take that for granted here in Phoenix. Yes. I mean, I'm always popped down to the Henry. It's like, <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> easy, yeah. Everything's we easy. We have to like get on a couple trains to get there, <laughs> yeah. unless if you want to drive. Park, finding parking was really hard. Yep. And I also, what you forget is just how wonderful it is to be outside here in Phoenix. Right. You, there's there's a fog that comes in at San Francisco at a certain part every day, yep. and you can't sit outside at night. I remember we used to sit out. It was just gorgeous. So huh. I just had my heart started aching to come back. Yeah. So it was really it was a hard decision, but it was the right one. So then you came back. Yeah. And that's about when you that's contacted when we met. me. Mm-hmm. And then the story of Candelaria Design kind of happened, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. So we worked on some some pretty crazy projects. Yes. I mean, mm-hmm. like you mentioned one that we inherited, not inherited. We were we were offered the opportunity to join on uh, on the side of Camelback Mountain. Yes. And this wasn't uh, your typical hillside home. A hillside home, you know, is maybe 10%, 20%, 30% slope. <laughs> this was 70, what, 73% <laughs> yeah. or something like that? Yes. Something really insane. Mark, when you drove me over there, it c- because it was so early on <laughs> in my starting here, and you drove me on the side and you said, this was this is where we're going to build. I, I, I. You were so confident that it gave me the confidence uh-huh. to to feel you know we can, move do it. we can do this, but I was inside. I was like, "What are we gonna do? <laughs> How is this gonna work?" Well, I remember climbing on it. Yeah, and I, can, I you know you, you think of walking on a lot yeah. and walking around. You were you climbing. physically had to use hands yeah. and feet. You were to get around up. to get around this lot. Yeah. So that's how steep it was. Yeah. I mean, it was insane. It was insane. But, you know, I think what it inspired me was, you know, just seeing some of the hill towns in Italy and yeah. what they build on there. It's possible. It's it's definitely possible. Yes. The only problem we had was, I don't think in Italy they have a uh, 20% grade rule on driveways. No. But Phoenix, they do. Yeah. So do the math. Twenty. You're a good math person. as I. So it's 20% slope mm-hmm. on a 73% – or 20% slope on a driveway on a 73% yeah, slope. Yeah, you're only – you're going to get so far. You, you can never catch up. No. So in order to – and then we looked at options like elevators and lifts Every for the cars. Option. And, we, and finally, I think we all kind of came up with the idea of let's – Let's just do a tunnel. Yeah. You know, we'll yeah. just make up the difference underground, and then we'll just pop out. Yeah. <laughs> and I think when f- somebody first said it, we're like, well, yeah, let's just do a tunnel. And then everyone's like, yeah, let's do a tunnel. <laughs> and we got this. excited about yeah. it. It was real James Bond. Yeah. Yeah. So that was quite a project. That took a long time. And it was. A lot of uh, approvals and yeah. hillside and 
construction. Oh, and we had some fun construction. Let's let's not forget about that. Oh gosh. So we made the news. Yeah. So in in order to build this house, they had to blast. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they had a company come out with dynamite. And they were they were blasting the crap out of that mountain. Yeah, and a lot of neighbors were not happy about that. They weren't too happy about that. So I think that's one day. I don't know. It was Fox Ten or somebody was oh out yeah. there, you know, just kind of doing a documentary or a feature mm-hmm. on this house that's being built in Camelback, and they were comparing us to Afghanistan, yeah. and blowing up cities. Seen from Afghanistan. And it was that very day when they were shooting uh-huh. footage that a little boulder about the size of a VW car got away. Rolled down. Fortunately, down. nobody was hurt. Nobody it was landed hurt. on a driveway. It landed on a driveway. Missed the house by what? Oh Ten gosh, feet? Probably. Twenty feet? Yeah. <coughs> that was Man. pretty scary. Oh. I'm all caught on film, of course. Oh gosh. Yeah, yeah, just go to go to YouTube. You'll see it. Just oh. hit blasting it camelback. Gives me, I think we all had ulcers during that time, oh just wanting it to get done. I remember and I was in Denver safe. and I think you called me. Yep. I and think I was we like, did. What? Yeah. You gotta be kidding me. I said, just get ready. Yeah. So no more blasting after that. That was it. That was <laughs> <laughs> the blasting was over. So, but then unfortunately, it turned into you know jackhammering, Jack which hammering. lasted forever. Yeah, forever. But that was quite a house, and it but is quite a house. Yeah. And so that was one. And then uh, we've got some neat ones we're doing now. We've got yeah. a great one with a bowling alley and. Oh man, I look at all the projects that I've been able to work with you on here, and it's been so much fun lately because I've got such a good variety. So there's, you know, I think we always say a home's different for everybody, you yeah. know, what they f- think is a home. And I, I've got that. I've got a beautiful, like, you know, something that's doing a really grand showpiece and then somebody else who's doing just a really small, you know, clean, comfortable thing. You know, there's, yeah. it's, but everyone the, has a different definition. It's, yeah. Of it. And so it's really fun to see, um, all the different, like what people envision, you right. know? Yeah, it's great. And where it goes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of your current projects right now. We've talked about the giant one with mm-hmm. the bowling alley mm-hmm. and great yeah. views of Camelback. Yeah. And fun client that's been to Italy with us. And yeah. And then we've got just around Camelback, not far from there, no. is one you're doing up on the hill with yeah. Isabel and her team. Yeah. And that house is going to be just amazing. It's just not very big. It's like, what, 3,500 square feet or yeah. 3,700? Yeah. And that's going to have in- incredible views. And the style you're kind of doing is, I call it, what, Southwest contemporary or yeah. Southwest modern? We had, we had started off by saying Buddha Sazi. Buddha Sazi, <laughs> that's right. Buddha Sazi. <laughs> she has this beautiful big Buddha. Yeah, and it's just kind of like this neat, like, Anasazi, you know, low yeah. kind of. So it feels feel indigenous, like yeah. but we bring this spiritual yeah. Zen side to Which the whole really thing. Which is really fun. Mm-hmm. So that's coming along pretty neat. It is. I heard we uh, presented the model yesterday or the day before and got Looking some good. big wows. Yeah. So that was pretty mm-hmm. cool. And then you just keep going around Cowback. Mm-hmm. And we've got a nice little house not too far from where Isabel and I live. Mm-hmm. Oh that's yeah. this cute little Santa Barbara courtyard house. Which has been so much fun to work on. Yeah. Especially because the clients, this was the, the property that the clients grew up on. Right. And now they're coming back to that same lot, building right. their their Forever dream house. Home. Yeah. yeah. So that's just, it's special to and work we're on. capturing the views a little bit better than the old house did. Yeah, which they didn't take advantage <laughs> of them at all. At all. No. And these views are amazing. It's all about just keeping no sun in. No, yeah. No. Yeah. So you were out there just the other day, weren't yeah. you? Yeah. And it's, it's looking great. It's looking great. Another yeah. project with Isabel and her team. Yep. So that'll be fun. Mm-hmm. And then what else you got cooking? I'm trying to think. You got a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, so we've got one in construction here in oh, Arcadia. Arcadia. That's yes, a big one. and I just drove by and it's up. Yeah, I just yeah, cool. that's been moving along. So that's great. Brimley's that's be awesome. yeah, been cruising Brimley on that. Brimley Development's doing that one. Mm-hmm. Yep. And starting a new remodel in Arcadia. Yep. And trying to think of got some up north in Scottsdale starting. Yeah, one in Paradise Valley, a big remodel. Yeah. So so kind of, of a little sprinkling of stuff, yeah. <laughs> do mm-hmm. you like m- hopping around from project to project? I do. Do you? Because it's, it, yeah, it, it keeps it interesting. And I love, you know, just the social aspect of it and getting to know the, the, the clients, the client, the different personalities. And yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. We did a fun remodel that we feature on our, on our Candelaria website page and our YouTube mm-hmm. uh, on, in North Central. Yeah. And uh, the story behind that whole house is in that video. That was, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So that was the... Uh, it was an old kind of Santa Barbara, mm-hmm. not a very good Santa Barbara, mm-hmm. and you you gave it a you gave Just it a whole a new life. Lift. Yeah. yeah, really nice. Yeah, and so I'm so glad because the the client was wondering if they should just tear down mm-hmm. or do something. So there was. I'm so glad they kept the bones on that one. There was a lot yeah. of work that needed to be done, but they were patient through it. So that was that was great. So, what have been some of your challenges? And how have you gotten through them in your life? I mean, what if what are some of the things? I mean, I'm sure it hasn't just been a breeze, right? No, no. Yeah, life's interesting, isn't it? It is. 
Now, you've never been married. Never been married, no. No kids. No kids. But you're kind of inheriting some kids. Yeah, so I live with my boyfriend who has three kids. Yeah. Yeah. And so what's their ages? We have six, ten, and twelve. Yeah, so that's a handful. Yeah. And you're getting ready to fly back to Indianapolis. With them, yeah. With them. And we yeah. were talking about the logistics yeah. of all that, given yeah. everything now. So exactly. that's that's going to be fun. Yeah, that's been a fun challenge. I mean, that's a, it's a it's you know, definitely a life change, you yeah. know, but, um, you know, it's with the right time and the right people. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's a, well, he's a great guy. Yeah, I just think is. the world of him. I so, so well, have there been any challenges? Have there been any tough times or? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, of course. Yeah. And I don't want to sound like a cliche, but I think being a woman in this industry, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that it's been. There aren't that there aren't that many women. Right. If you, I mean, you look at our mm -hmm. office. Our office is mm -hmm. probably fifty fifty, a pretty dark you, close. You, yeah, you do a great. And job that wasn't just that wasn't due to okay, we got to be fifty fifty. Let's make sure you know we. Yeah. It just organically happened that way. Yeah, so. and I think this doesn't matter if you're male or female, but just being able to establish yourself in an industry that's always a challenge, and and especially when you move into a new you know moving from San Francisco where to I had here. some connections mm -hmm. to. I was lucky that I do have a lot of connections just because I grew up here, but not necessarily in my industry. Right. So it's just establishing yourself, yourself, getting, you know, you got to work hard. You have to, you need, you're not just given that. You yeah. know, some people are not just knocking on your door and saying, oh, yeah, you deserve this. You right. know, you just have to, you have to prove it. And you have to show up and yeah. do all of and that's, that. You know, that's what I say mm -hmm. all the time. It, it, hard work solves a lot of problems. Yeah. And everyone looks mm -hmm. at your career and they go, wow, you, it must have been so easy. Or, mm -hmm. you know, nothing's easy. No, <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. And every project's hard, isn't yeah. it? It is. I mean, you might get the simplest little thing, and there's always going to be some challenges. There's always something. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So, mm -hmm. I've, you know, what I keep learning is the more of that repertoire you build behind you, mm -hmm. they, they do get easier. Yeah. You learn not to let it phase you so much. No. Because oh. you just realize you just got to keep going. You'll get through it. Yeah. You know? I used to be so, s I remember how stressed I used to be, especially working in New York and San Francisco. <laughs> and I, doesn't, the, the challenges, aren't easier necessarily, but I've learned that there's always a solution now. You just, if you just work at it and you dig into it, there's good, you're going to find gonna a solution. It out. The, it's mm -hmm. not the end of the world. No. You know? No. We so. don't, we're not, we're not doctors. No. This is, there's <laughs> good, there's a solution. There is a solution. Yeah. And, so. yeah and, and the thing I find a lot of times mm -hmm. is the harder the problem, the more creative the solution, the yeah. more crazy and cool the project ends up being. Exactly. You it know? adds something. It, it adds, adds an element. Something. Yeah. Totally. So mm -hmm. what are some of the trends you kind of see mm -mm. happening in architecture and design? Well, so I think we've probably exhausted the white m farmhouse, you know, black. I mean, I, there's a lot of there, but so I think. It's gotten so overdone. It's gotten overdone. Yeah. And so I think we're, people are kind of moving out of that a little bit. But I, what's not changing, I think, is the traditional styles with the modern touches. That's what I think it is. So it's, you know, some people call that transitional, but but maybe it's even a little bit more edgier and modern. Right. You know, there's, right. it's kind of, there's... Just there's depends where you, where you swing the pendulum. Exactly. You can swing it a little mm -hmm. more traditional yeah. if that's what your comfort level is. Yep. You can swing it a little more contemporary if that's what your comfort level is. Yeah, but it's a blending of the <coughs> two. Yeah. And the other one I keep hearing more and more and seeing more and more bad examples is contemporary. Yeah. I love good contemporary. Yeah, me too. But I'm seeing so many people use it as the lazy man's design uh, style yeah you know it's like oh i don't have to do anything just keep it real clean and edited and it's perfect You're like it's no like it actually is even more detail need more, more detail yes. and more balance yes. and more symmetry everything and more has to come together yeah, just right just right mm -hmm. and yeah so i see so much of that style just gets so bastardized and yeah, screwed butchered. up mm -hmm. and so I'm, I'm hearing it from a lot of people i just i don't want that really bad contemporary yeah you know yeah. Like, give me some materials give me some richness i want something that that i feel connected with yeah you know so i've seen a lot harsh. of that mm -hmm. right so do you like working on the big mega projects or do you like the smaller you like the combination i like the combination yeah it's kind of fun to bounce back and forth isn't it, it is it's a great balance yeah because i think you know the, they're I, they both are puzzle pieces to me yeah. and, and i just like that puzzle challenge so it, there it's both fun right. for me mm -hmm. so what did you think about the puzzle pieces when you came to our oh, firm it's the <laughs> it's the smartest no one's gonna know, our clients will know what that means yeah but it what, is what one of the best ways to work out a design with a client by far that I've ever come across. Yeah. Because you're right. So the puzzle people puzzle pieces allows us to be really collaborative with our client right. and have them really engaged from the f the start Very of beginning. it. Yep. Oh, I've been in other you know firms and work with other people that they just what we're not take the program yeah, and start and designing do a whole thing and they come back and it's wrong and it's months are wasted or not wrong but not exactly what the client envisioned. envisioned yeah 
So this is, I think this is just such an efficient. It's been fun. It's yeah. fun way to do it, I think. Oh, it's really fun. Yeah. So um, how, how do you balance your life? I mean, we work mm-hmm. hard, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you work eight-hour day, six-hour day, and then you hit the golf course for a few hours. <laughs> or you go I wish. jog and I hit wish. the gym. Yeah. And Go to the market and get a nice, <laughs> you know, some food for a nice dinner. This all sounds great. Maybe I, like right? yeah, some, yeah. maybe I should start doing this. Maybe I should start doing that. So tell that. us what reality is. So I really try when I'm working, I'm focused on working. Yeah. So I make the most of those hours and um, be present there. Right. So when I get home at night, I can be present with the family. Yeah. Um, and, you know, th- it always overlaps. Yeah. But you do your best. Do your best. So yeah. you can get as much work done in the day. Because I do. I have to. I I charge by having some me time. Right. So whether that's, you know, I just did a half marathon and that was really good to have. That was in California, right? It was in California right before this pandemic hit. Thank goodness I was able to do that. Get that in. Yeah. Um, Also for my 40th. So that was really fun. But it's just, you know, getting just a half hour to go run. I I do the bike. Sometimes I do yoga. Um, I do a lot of that. But I just take a little bit. It's always good to treat yourself just a little bit of you time. Yeah. And, and fill your tanks a little bit. Yeah. So how do you fill your tanks? I mean, you mm-hmm. like to travel. I love to travel. I mean, do you think as an architect, that's uh, it's to me, important. I think that's one of the best ways to refill the engine. Every time I do it, I come back saying, "This I need to do more of this. Yeah. You know, I forget because you just, it's you're being exposed to different ways of life and, yeah. how, and it's just inspiring. So sometimes I, I, I do get stressed out by the work and thinking, well, I just need to stay here and do this. And right. But then if you just, carve out those you know there's going to be the work is going to be here and and now we can really work anywhere yeah you know exactly and if you just take take the work with you take a couple days to go experience it you come back more fulfilled you know yeah for sure and you guys escape up to uh, pine top now we do do that that's and i'm really thankful that we have that escape um my boyfriend has a cabin up there, and we've been able to get up there and just get get away from the heat, but also just different change of scenery. Yeah, change and of work scenery up makes there. a big difference. Yeah, yeah. So it's an easy it's an easy drive up there. Yeah, for sure. And then I know you like to cook too. Yeah, I do. Right, which mm-hmm. is a perfect uh, adjunct to this firm. Obviously, mm-hmm. we got our whole new kitchen yeah. in there, so I'm I'm looking forward to when I get back from my vacation. Yeah. For us to get in that kitchen together. Yeah, that way we're gonna do that, right? Yes, of course. Okay, so yeah. you you won a big contest early. <laughs> <laughs> Last early spring, yeah. I can't remember when it was. Yeah, it, we did t- the. Was it with Lux? Or? It was. Yeah, and who was the the kitchen sponsor? I can't remember. Sub Zero. Oh, Sub Zero, yes. wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So y- it was what three or four teams. Yeah, and we were paired up with a local celebrity chef. Yeah. And and there was a group of each each celebrity chef had like a architect, you know, interior designer, like a small right. group, and we we sous chefed and helped her cook. Right. And then there was a team of judges that yeah so. And so you guys won. We won. We won. That was, was pretty exciting. It was really fun. I love the video of you of you guys <laughs> finding out so you won. You were so excited. I, I turned out to be a little bit more competitive than I know, but that was <laughs> <laughs> that was really fun. No, I know you're competitive. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't be sitting in the chair if you weren't. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. So we I get all the accolades for the cooking, but you're a good cook. Well, I I do love to, and it's it is actually one of those things that helps send me out if I can go home and yeah. and you know have a glass of wine and do a little cooking. It makes a big it difference. It makes a difference. Yeah. Fortunately, the the kids don't like anything green, so that's been changing up what I cook. They don't like anything green. No, no. Well, one doesn't like any vegetables, so <laughs> we have to. <laughs> so he's on the keto diet, yeah, just pure yeah. meat and protein. So we gotta, I've gotta figure out some new yeah, recipes. Some buffalo, yeah. some antelope. You <laughs> yeah. know, it's my kind of kid right there. <laughs> so, um, do you love to read? I love to read. What are you reading now? Um, so I have a, a bunch of different books I'm reading. I'm reading one book called Pure Land, which I highly recommend to mm. anybody that lives in Arizona because it's about the Havasupai Falls and oh, cool. Indians here. And you and did that but a I couple did. years ago, right? Yeah, and it's a true story about somebody that hiked it. But then also I'm reading, um, there's some Mal- Malcolm Gladwell. Oh, link. yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's a great book. Mm-hmm. And um, those are the two that are kind of yeah. I'm going. Between. Do you listen to any podcast besides, of course, mine? I d- I do. <laughs> I I have a kind of a guilty pleasure though. I listen to like true crime podcasts. Oh, which that's are interesting. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> it's like a total escape for you. It's a total. And you want to solve it? It's a total escape for me. So and there's some there's a couple of comedian podcasts. It's 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 that's probably podcasts are my guilty pleasure of yeah. just kind of I know, I zoning love podcasts out. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just I I, I love especially like when we road trip now, we're mm-hmm. gonna drive all the way to Oregon. We'll just podcast all the way up there. Yeah. It I makes th- the time go by so fast and yeah. it's just fun to listen to them. I think so too. So you you go into Indianapolis yeah. next week. Yes. So what's ahead for you? What's 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 ahead for Meredith Thompson? This is interesting because 
I've started getting getting to where I am right now, mm-hmm. being a principal mm-hmm. and some things with my personal life. I, these were goals I was looking at. For for years, for years, for years. But now you've already got them done. Yes. Well, you know, or you know, they're in the gotten works. gotten into the yeah, process you're, you're, of it. Yeah, you're there. That I last week I started charting out, you know, new new goals, and a lot of it's you know, health. You yep. know, just because Staying I am healthy. forty and yep. wanting to think about that. Um, you know, just building my family here, mm-hmm. and so I think that's big. We're we're looking at a hopefully doing a house remodel. I'd like to start doing little, like my own little, little projects, projects for my myself, which yep. would be fun. Yep. Do some creative outlet that way. Yep. So, um, and then, yeah, I mean, in terms of this company, it's just kind of like, I love where we're going with it and, and maybe getting, you know, some projects across the country and mm-hmm. doing some things like that. So, yep. so just. Stay Sky's the limit. There. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's with this group of people that we've got in here, I've, I've just learned that you know we can really do whatever we set our mind to. Yeah. Just it's a it's the it's the process of sitting down yeah. and and strategizing, yeah. putting it together, getting that energy, and we're good manifestors. So yeah, and I think being here, I've learned some tools just because some of the things that we've done as a company and mm-hmm. the training that we've done yep. is that you know unless you write it down and list how you're you'd be able to get there right and then actually then work in those things into your daily life yep it's not going to happen right so you just have to like really yeah just like building the house exactly (laughs) just (laughs) draw a set of plans (laughs) it's and just build it yeah and just and it just don't bite off more than yeah take it a step at a time little pieces will get you there yep everyone wants to get there immediately because we're in the instant gratification world that we live in but it takes everything takes time yeah you know, it's like don't cut out everything out of your diet. You know, don't do those weird things where you just, you know, <laughs> flip yeah, a switch, have <laughs> a piece of ice a day, and then expect that's going to be, yeah, the fulfill perfect you, solution yeah, fulfill forever. you for the rest of the, yeah, your life. Yeah, that isn't going to work. No, so mm-hmm. so we've been struggling as not struggling. We've been adapting as a com- company with this yeah. whole COVID thing, right? Yeah. What do you think? I mean, it's pretty freaky, isn't it? It Especially is. Especially now with it respiking in Arizona. I just, I just wonder if like how this is all going to be. Even after this, like it's, cha- I think it's just changed the world forever. Yeah, I do too. I think the mud room is going to become the desanitation room. Well, yeah, this is. We should already, we should rename it already. Yeah, and you know, immediately we started noticing people asking for new things like homeschooling r- rooms. Yep. Like the program of homes has changed. No, we got the sanitation machines mm-hmm. where you can put your keys and your cell phone in yeah. for an hour, yeah. and it ultraviolets it and cleans it and. They want, know. yeah, they want a self-sustaining little compound. So yep. if this ever happens again. More gardens. Or when it, when it happens again, you know. Yeah, well, it'll <laughs> happen again. Yeah. I mean, there's just too many damn people on the earth. So yeah. Stuff's it's gonna, stuff's gonna happen. Unavoidable, yeah. <laughs> that they just want to feel safe in their home. Yeah. So, yeah, I think mm-hmm. the home thing is really taking on a whole new level of appreciation. Yes. You know, I think it was the car and travel and this and that, but now everyone's stuck and they're like, my home sucks. Yeah, I need to focus on this. <laughs> how can this I make how can I make this better? This could be a lot better, right? Yeah. Yes. And then we I mean we love doing rehabs and that's another thing that we mm-hmm. get we get pigeonholed into the mega mansions mm-hmm. a lot of times. But uh I think all three of us architects partners, we love we all love remodels love and it. makeovers, right? Love it. Yeah, and that's <laughs> it makes up about two thirds to three quarters of our work actually. There's so much product here that needs some TLC. Yeah. And there's it's really fun. I was just looking at some of your before and afters. Um that it's just amazing what you can do with <laughs> a little f- like a little, little face imagination. Lift. Yes. And I, I I love that puzzle piece aspect yeah. of it. And then you know, I look at again, so much of Phoenix was built in the seventies and eighties mm-hmm. and it was not built very well. No. And it was they not didn't designed expect that it was gonna last that long. No. And then they didn't. No. <laughs> so I uh, you know, I'll drive through Paradise Valley or I'll drive through parts of North Scottsdale and mm-hmm. it's just like this is endless. Yeah. You know, there's gonna be remodel work here for thirty years. Yeah. You know, and so it's a big it's a big part of our business and and I think what uh I enjoy doing is it's just like we said with the pieces with the puzzle pieces is sit down with the client and just have some dream sessions. Yeah. You know, what can we do? What can we do? Let's talk and let's think about it. What let's do you want to accomplish? About it at every angle. Right. Yeah. So And that's yeah, had kind of a similar experience yesterday for this remodel we're doing in Arcadia. It was like let's c- should we put on a second story, you know, sh- right. second story the no what second ifs. story. Yeah. And 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 thinking about it from every angle. Yeah, and mm-hmm. that's the important part in, in design, I think, that 
you know, every, clients want to rush through the process, and I, I really try to slow them down a little bit because you have one shot to do the design right. Yeah. You know, and if you put the if you put the time into the design, do a really great design, put the time into doing a great set of drawings, you're going to save time during construction. Oh. You're going to save money during construction, and that whole process is going to be so much nicer. And when you see people that just rush through a set of plans and throw to the builder, and the builder's like, okay, what do I do here? You know, what, what's this? When, when do I order this? How do, where do I get down, it? Yeah, ripping down <laughs> yeah. walls when they go, you know, after they go up. Yeah. So because another step that, we, that I know you and I love to do is the staking. Yeah. And we have our little staking parties. Which has been very successful. Yeah. So we'll get out there. We'll, we'll stake out the property. We'll stake out the, the, the conceptual floor plans. So we do this in a pretty early stage. And it's just really fun to show people what we're kind of thinking and show them their ideas. Get them up on ladders. Here's your finished floor. And we make a lot of changes during yeah, that Yeah, more often than not that we find something yeah. that, well, we're going to need to raise this window because I want to get that viewer. If I just turned it seven degrees, yeah. I would capture, capture this. That. So it's been a very valuable part of the process. Yeah, and I think, again, a lot of designers just don't do it because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of effort. It yeah. takes effort to get out there, and especially this time of year. Yeah. <laughs> so but, yeah, just get up early and do it. And and then Janice does it's such a great job I with the tent. And I almost like to do it just because we get a little special. <laughs> like, she sets up the, be <laughs> the best table in the morning of oh treats. Oh, my God. It's, well, it's fabulous, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? You get out there. It's fresh oh, air. And it's like fresh orange juice and cold <laughs> water. Champagne. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a it's an absolute joy working with you. I love when we collaborate too, on things. I we agree. Have a, we have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward personally to many, many years. I know I'm trying to retire. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to <laughs> hand off the baton. And it's very hard to do, not because of your your guys' capabilities. It's just mm -hmm. I love what I do so much. I know. And you've grown and this you've grown this company. Yeah. And so I just this love, is your baby. I, I love know. working with you guys. I it's know. just so much fun. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I got these great bandmates. I want to perform with you guys. Right. You know? Right. That's what it is. Yeah. So I enjoy it. I look forward to all the years ahead. And, Same and here. Thanks for making time to do this. I know we're all so busy. Thanks we're for all, asking me. We're all trying to get out of town, but this is going to be a lot of fun to have this. I appreciate you asking me. Thank you so much. Great job, and have a safe trip. Okay, you too. I want to say a big thank you to my good friends at Stockett Tile and Granite Company, where your project is our priority. The Stockett team, along with so many others, are wrapping up the final details on our demonstration kitchen at our new expansion of our Candelaria Design offices. We've started our online video cooking classes, and our kitchen is amazing. I have had the pleasure of working with the Staka team for nearly 40 years on some amazing projects, and trust me, they are the epitome of excellence when it comes to tile, marble, and granite, work bar none. Their skill and customer service is impeccable, and the bottom line is they are just good people. I have traveled with, dined with, and just had good times, both personally and professionally, with Dave Stock and his lovely wife, Becky, and they are the best. When it comes to your next kitchen, make sure Stock It Tile and Granite is a part of your team. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed our podcast. We encourage you to write a review, screenshot it, and share it with your friends. Please instant message it to me and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We thank you for listening, and we look forward to sharing more insights to inspiring living next week.